and welcome to another edition of Game Guru Live Twitch Broadcasting with your host Lee Ember. The unscripted, unrehearsed, making up as we go along broadcast for Game Guru. Traditionally used to show you how to make a game, but frequently going off on a tangent, showing you some crazy random stuff like Lee fixing books, or Lee editing scripts, or Lee answering many, many questions along the way. And without any form of prior inspiration, I often revert to the forums to find out what you would like me to talk about during these broadcasts. Now, I must apologise that uh, our normal weekly schedule of Wednesday was interrupted as I was in London, talking about very cool things. So I shuffled it onto Thursday, so um, you're probably not going to get this live if your appointment with me is Wednesday, but you will be able to find it in video form in YouTube land later on today. So I usually look in this board, this forum board, and this thread, Twitch Sessions last page, in order to find out what people want me to talk about, to reveal about the innards of Game Guru. And if there isn't anything here, then I get to make something up. But in the meantime, certainly get to answer any questions you might have. And I certainly do invite anyone who has anything to ask, who wants to explore some aspect that we haven't covered previously in uh, broadcast, just uh, post your question and I shall be happy to answer it. Now this is live, this is Twitch broadcasting, so you have an opportunity to show up, ask your questions and we can answer them live and actually show you within the software what's going on. And the latest one is, looks like a little bit of a conversation thread. I'm actually looking for, you know, if there's anything people have a question about that they've posted on this forum, and then I can sort of belatedly answer it. Um, do, 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 do. When you stand on a trigger, video plays, left click to skip and video stops, but the audio keeps playing till the end, very annoying. I'm sure it is. That only happens in test game. When you port standalone, that doesn't happen, so I'm not sure if it's a bug rather than just a placeholder for getting out of it while testing. Technically, yes, it's a bug. If it's in test game, and you really want the sound to stop, of course, uh, but then when you're in standalone, when you actually make a standalone executable of your finished game, then that bug goes away. It's a minor bug. It means it's not really going to affect your final production, but you sure you would like it to actually not do that in test game. And unless anything else pops in, I'm actually going and fix that bug right here, right now. So, there doesn't seem to be anything else. Let's just scroll a bit further up. Maybe that was just talking about one specific bug. Uh, what about making a custom weapon? I'm sure many would appreciate how to do that. Perhaps not with the modelling part. <laughs> Thank you. Just tweaking a standard weapon to do something different. I dabbled with the old Commando game with the Golden Uzi, but had to try to reverse engineer it from studying the existing ones. That is a darn good idea, and that will absolutely fill up 30 minutes. Yes, audience, Lee's going to try for a 30-minute broadcast again. In brackets, he invariably does the whole 60 minutes and bores us to tears. But we're going to go for 30 minutes. That's a brilliant suggestion. You've seen me go into um, Visual Studio fixing bugs before. I don't think that's what most people want to tune it in for. They want to find out more things about Game Guru. So that's what we are going to do. I already loaded up. This is my dev version. If I just come out of there altogether to prove it. We're going to my dev, dev, run that. You'll see I'm currently working on 1.131-B5. That's beta 5. It introduces lots of really cool things. I was actually scrolling through the general discussion on the forum, and there's a bit of a concern now that my uh, dev blogs have dried up. Um, that was by request. Uh, we, um, the teams thought it would be good to get some of those um, announcements, like the awesome Raspberry Pi version of AGK. If we just sort of posted the news and then immediately drowned it with daily blogs of uh, Game Guru activity, then no one would get, you know, the time to actually see that uh, announcement. In addition, the the new unlimited bundles, which is a new thing Steam have done, where you can make up your um, DLC collection with anything you've got without having to sort of pick and choose the bundles that we've created. It's like the ultimate bungle. You can just pick the bits that you've not got and then get a big discount on it. So we wanted to leave time on the main 
uh, website to see that. But I think that time has passed. I think everyone knows about the Raspberry Pi and the Unlimited stuff. So maybe I can start resuming my dev blogs because I, I really do enjoy them. So the, um, the idea is we want to create a new weapon, right? Okay, fine. Let, we can make a new weapon. No problem. I can do that in the next 20 minutes. But what am I talking about? Weapon. What's weapon? Okay, so I'm going to give you some uh, barrels over here. And then maybe another group over here. And then maybe some barrels like these hazards. When you've got your player start marker, that's where you start your game, you can have a, a field here which says has weapon. You can choose what weapon you want. Now, by default, you can have a lot. There's lots and lots of weapons. There's medieval ones, there's melee ones, there's projectile ranged ones. This is the Uzi that was mentioned. You start with that one clip. I'm going to have 100 clips and I'm going to have. Thousand health, just in case I get too close to those exploding barrels. And I'm going to save what I've got just in case. Save early, save often, so it's a good idea. So you press the rocket for test game, you go into the test game, and then right at the start of the game where the arrow started, you actually get an Uzi, you see? And it fires bullets, and the bullets rattle around on the floor, and then eventually disappear, all using physics. You've got animation, you can reload, the gun can jam, you can shoot things like barrels. You can shoot exploding barrels and blow up. Good time had by all. Now, there's some things you'll have noticed about this gun. One, you know, it's a standard Uzi colour and you've got the hand and you've got the um, the crosser. You've got the sort of the motion sway thing going on, which is pretty cool. You've got clip maximum, so there's 25 in my clip. See my gun's jammed. I can press R to release the jam goes to zero, it automatically reloads when it gets to zero, you notice that I've actually put 25 in, that may not be the size of the clip, so what you can do is if you go into weapons, you can also get ammo um, for the Uzi, so I think it's this one, the 9mm uh, Parabellum, scroll down a little bit, I'm not completely uncultured so I'm going to get some scenery, furniture, table, put a table down, and then I'm going to put some ammo on the table because this is we're civilized. So save that, run again. So now I'm going to load up with lots and lots and lots of ammo because I want to see what the maximum clip size is because this is one of the things I'm going to let you change. So now I've got 135 sort of 9 millimeter bullets. When I reload, 25. All right, so this Uzi has a 25 bullet clip. So I can empty that clip, jam, and then when you get to zero, it, it puts a new clip in and it takes 25 bullets off your, um, your, your sort of your clip ammo count and puts it in your gun and you carry on everything exactly ever after. And there's other things about damage, um, you know, you shoot something for long enough, it will actually uh, damage. And so we can change the damage of that. Best way to actually ex explain that is to pop, to pop in a character. So if I just drop in about here, and we go to his properties and we change his strength to 200 units. And I'm just thinking, oozes, there's just lots of bullets flying out. You can't really attest the damage one. So let's instead of Uzi, let's go for. Um, a da -da 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 it's a really good one. Where is it? I'm just not seeing it, am I? Don't want the uh, rocket launcher. Shotgun? Shotgun? No. Colt 1911. Yes. 100. Apply changes. Obviously, <laughs> that table full of ammo was now a bit redundant because it's ammo for a different kind of gun. So what you can do is move the table out of the way, delete all the ammo, move the table back, go into where weapons folder, look for the Pistol, which is 0.38 cartridges. Press return, which will make sure it places it on top of things instead of on the floor. Press save and run. Uh, you notice it's just reloading it because I've actually removed an entity and I no longer exist in the level. It cleans up the uh, the libraries uh, of items on your left. It's a nice little optimization there. So you've got a gun. Like lots of that. Headshot, because I want to have it in this clip. Right, so this gun can hold seven bullets per clip, and it still does the same sorts of things. So it kills characters. 
but we set it to a set health of 200, but headshots, uh, you know, one shot kills. If I shoot him, like, say, in the, in the legs. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six bullets at medium range does the trick. Useful to know, you see, because now we're going to change this gun to our own version. And I'm going to race into that now. I'm going to save all this, just so we've got the same test environment. I'm going to jump into my folder. This is my def folder, so don't be afraid that there's more files in here than you've got. This is just stuff that I use. And I'm going to jump straight into Game Core and Guns. And you notice the different categories, Modern Day, Medieval, Interactive, Fantasy, Eastern, Cartoon. Uh, and Colt 1911 is a modern day weapon, as you can see it there. So rather than create lots of subtypes, no, let's create a subtype. I'm going to copy this, Colt 1911, into a new folder called User. And instead of Colt 1911, I'm going to call it the Colt 1912. Yes. A year later, they invented this weapon. And inside here you can see lots of files, you've got files for everything, you've got files for the model of the gun, the textures, sound effects, uh, textures for the, the, the hood and textures for the pickup, more sound effects, and you've got the gun spec.txt, which is sort of the magic thing. So we can call that Colt 1912, so now it's our own particular version of it. Don't worry too much about these files. Um, it's only really this name here in the folder, Colt 1912, because that's one that's now going to show up when we want to select a weapon. But we're going to modify a few things. For example, if we go back to that gun spec, see the reload quantity was 7, we could set that to, say, uh, 42. So each clip has 42 bullets. Don't ask me how that's even possible, but now I've changed it to 42. Um, does it auto reload? Uh, full reload, yes, please. Uh, but what we could do is say um, set that to zero, and we can set the damage. Instead, you know, it took six shots. Now let's say our gun's better and it can do like damage of a hundred. So technically, we'd probably kill a guy in three shots with that. The range is pretty big. Uh, we'll not mess with that just in case you know we're firing away and nothing ever happens. And then all these down here are all the c different kinds of weapons. You've got sniper rifles, you've got uh, rocket launchers, and they all need different things. But n notice here we've got a reliability overheat after. If you set that to zero and set that to zero, there's no chance of overheating, there's no chance of jamming. So that's good. But the <laughs> this is a Colt, you know, it's not like a machine gun. And you've got all the different settings for uh, you know how much the gun will recoil, the lag time when you're sweeping the gun left and right, you know how, how quick does it take for the gun to centre itself in the middle of the screen. And here's the the the, the, the juicy bit: gun underscore s dot dds is the texture for the gun, and that's the shader it uses. Don't mess with the shader for now. You can do if you want once you become a shader expert. This is the what more one we're interested in, which is the gun underscore d texture. And zero is gun. You can change the actual icon, which represents what the gun is, and the, the gun type is one. And we'll keep all that the same. You can change the muzzle flash. I mean, it's using muzzle flash four right now. But if we come out of the guns, there's a muzzle flash folder, and you've got four and fifty-one. If we have a quick look at fifty-one. We'll just come out of this for a second because it loads DDS in my uh, Visual Studio Community Edition. For some reason, ah, so it's a nice red one. I think that might be the cartoon one. But so, just for fun, we'll change it from flash four to flash fifty-one, and uh, everything else can be tweaked. The position of where the gun is on the screen, the actual modified color of the muzzle flash, and if smoke that comes out, and the speed of the smoke, size of the smoke. So muzzle size. Let's make it even bigger. Using smoke, smoke speed. We'll speed that, uh, reduce that to say a speed of five. The zoom alignment, there's no zoom in on a Colt, so we can leave all that. The brass, what gets kicked out, is it kicked out at 45 degrees, or do we kick it out at, say, 90 degrees, which kind of goes uh, at a different angle. We've also got brass angle, life, speed, so if we change the brass, so the brass stays around in the game a lot longer, and you've got the angle, the speed, let's make it really slow speed, the rotation variance, then you've got the animations. Now, we're not dealing with modeling, so we don't need to create modeling animation, which means we don't have to change these key state uh, keyframes. If you start creating your own 3D models and animating them yourself, 
Remember your animation numbers, and this is where all the animations are entered for everything. Guns when it's idle, guns when you're walking, guns when you're running, guns when you're reloading, guns when you're turning, guns when you are having different ammo types, guns when you're zooming. All these require animating. You know, it is not. A, don't take it too lightly when you think about creating your own gun model. It's a very involved process. These are all the WAF files that we're going to use, and then these are all the keyframes that trigger those sounds. Now there's some that's automatic like uh, zoom, fire, reload, dry fire and put away. But you can trigger a new any sound you want with on any frame of your gun. And that's all done in this part. So we'll save that. Remember we identified gun um, and it's users gun, da, 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 gun underscore D which is this. But here's the thing. We don't really know how to Edit DDS files. DDS is a direct draw surface. It's for DirectX. It's, there's not many app packages that will load and save DDS. However, there are app packages that will do PNG. So what we can do is my friendly neighborhood community edition of Visual Studio 2015 can export as a PNG. Hey! So click save. Oh no, wait a minute. We don't want Flash 51. We want the gun! So it's going to load in the gun, save as, PNG, save, which is that. Now if we have a look now, it's actually saved out gun underscore D, PNG. And if we open that, my uh, package of choice, Jask Paint Shop Pro, it's an old version, version 7. But you know when you get used to things, you keep on using things, that's my excuse. Now what are you looking at here? I hear you scream. You're looking at flesh colour. And you're looking at uh, gun diffuse. Now, just to show you some other bits, which I won't go into, you notice this. This is what's called a normal map. It gives that rather flat, geometry, riddled, faceted hand. It's nice, smooth, rendered look. But you don't need to mess with that. Again, you're going into the world of modeling, texturing, and all that cool stuff. This one you might want to change. This is actually the specular texture. So you can't really appreciate what it is there because it doesn't really. Um, it tries to render it all and becomes helpful, but in doing so, becomes extremely unhelpful. So if we actually look at it as this, the white bits are shiny and the black bits are not shiny, and everywhere in between is uh, a modification of that. So that's the uh, RGB. If we actually look, have a quick look at the alpha, you'll actually see it's even so ever so slightly glowy. Um, so that's the specular, and we can maybe change that if we wanted to. But what I really want to do is show you how to change the diffuse. Because if everyone remembers James Bond, there was a movie called The Man with the Golden Gun. And this isn't gold, it's sort of a grey, isn't it? So what I want to do is two things. And uh, yes, I'm going to screw up the, a bit of the hand, but I don't mind. What I'm going to do is take this all of this and I'm going to make it a white like that and then what I'm going to do is copy all that I'm going to do make a mask of the source image and then I'm going to um, save it to the alpha channel get rid of this really subtle specular delete that bugger and then I'm going to add this which is my super white one and I'm going to paste that original image back in uh, because remember, this is specular, and this is this color highlights and tints. Now, it might, I might have mistook the alpha um, as specular, and it might actually turn out to be uh, emissive or self-illuminating. In which case, you're going to get a very white gun, but we'll find out. So, what we're going to do is save that. Yes, thank you very much. And with this, we're going to make it gold. Now, I know a few things I can do here. So, I think I'll go to colorize and zoom out a bit oh, that's red the man with the red gun no that wasn't that wasn't a good box office hit that man with the green gun no man with the cyan gun no man with the blue gun uh, da, 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 purple gun I think I've maybe missed it uh, man with the orange gun about 60 mm. you see what I wouldn't give for a colour wheel right now. Let's go man with the orange gun. Da -na -na -na. There you go. So now I've changed the the really nice colours that I noticed has done for me with a really crude one that I just slapped on. So I'm going to save that. 
Let's have a quick look at the mask for the alpha. Oh yeah, that's transparency. If you wanted holes in your in your in your texture, like you want a two um like a two D quad, like a site, and you just want to render like a a texture, but then a hole through it using the texture, you can do that with the alpha channel of the diffuse. So enough of all that gubbins. Now what I want to do is make new DDS files. So what we're going to do, just for sake of going backwards as well as forwards, is rename them, not delete them. So the engine can't find those anymore. Now we're going to make DDSs out of these PNGs. How do I do that? Well, I'll probably use the same tool as what I've been using here. I drag it in to there, load it in, and then I'm going to save it out as a DDS. So you're just reversing the process. Save, leave, drag in my new specular, or rather specular. And then again, we've got it, great, wonderful, save as, change the format to DDS, save, and there it is. And you see what the community edition does, it, it, it respects the alpha, it thinks alpha is transparency, so that's why you see all of that and none of that was very dark. We come out of us that, and now what you can see, you've got a DDS and an underscore S. Um, uh, yeah, an underscore DDS and underscore S DDS. Thing is, we created those, and you'll also notice something else. Um, that's a lot smaller than uh, the original one, which is actually it's four times bigger. Yeah, well, that's because the format that it saved out as wasn't the one that this one was using, which was probably being expedient with the DXT format. But you'll, that's also in Community Edition. You can change the format of the DDS file. So with that in place, what do you think will happen if we actually run it and then change it to this weapon? Well, let's find out, shall we? Load up my dev version. And uh, like I said, this is a live broadcast. If you've got any questions, you want to post them, just post them here. I'm quite happy to do something very specific, change a weapon that um, in a particular way, because there's lots of things that you can change with the weapon. So we're loading our test level as a benchmark. And this time we're going to go into our player start mark properties, but instead of modern slash Colt 1911. We scroll it out a bit and have a look down. We should find <laughs> user slash cult nineteen twelve. My weapon. So apply changes, save, run. And because we've only changed certain things, the ammo that we dropped on that table should still work. No reason. I mean, they're, they're practically identical, right? So there you've got. Um, a very very shiny um, and slightly orange gun. And remember, when I've changed the specular to like all white. That means it's 100% specular. But unfortunately, you got a little bit of uh, shininess on the on the hand as well. That's just to be expected when you start messing with specular. But again, we should be able to collect all the ammo. Whoa! And then let's see if our increased damage works. So one shot, two shot. Yes. So at that kind of range, my bullet damage of 100, you know, there's no fall off in damage at that kind of range. So two hits, 100 each. He has health of 200, so he collapses. And what I have noticed is um, I've got this weapon. But that's because I picked it up, you see. That's the original one, and that's mine one. This one came from him. I picked up his weapon. He was still using the ancient 1911. <laughs> Philistine, whereas I'm using the much improved Colt 1912 with the uh, the buffed exterior, and so it's got a hundred damage. It's super shiny, so you can change the texture. Like this and um, up as well, just for good measure. So just to show you some of the other things, we've got a little bit of time. I do kind of want to keep it to half an hour to keep it short and sweet. Remember when um, I was talking about WAF files and things like that? If we come out of there and go back into a uh, folder, which are all these wonderful things, you notice you've got in the, the gun spec, it says fire1. If you've got a file name called fire.wav and just put that in 
the, the gun spec, fine, it's one. But if you do fire one, it will look for fire two, fire three, and fire four. So there'll be four alternations on um, the sound. So every sound sounds slightly different, and it just makes the gun feel a bit more um, variable and a bit more original. But just for kicks, what I want to show you is... Um, let's say the zoom... I, I, I mean, I have an explosion somewhere. If I can grab... An explosion sound really quickly, just so that you can change the sound as well as the graphics and the behaviours. Um, I think it's misc, miscellaneous, explode, yeah. So then we go back into gun core, guns, uh, own category, 1912 is the folder, don't worry about these, these are just for internal use, you can call them whatever you want. We drop that one in, but we just call it fire, uh, or let's call it big fire. This is a ridiculous sound effect, by the way. I must warn you, this is just silly. And we change fire one, which is the firing sound effect, with our new WAF file. We click save, we rerun Genguru. Remember, when you launch Genguru, it preloads all the guns. So if you're adding guns, don't expect them to instantly appear. It does the initialization step as you were starting up the software. So you have to come out the software and then re come in if you've added new weapons. So we're going to reload this in. We don't have to go back to the player start and add the weapon. We've now selected the 1912. We've got that in our thing. So we've just changed the what it is on the outside. We've come back in. It'll reflect those changes immediately. And then hopefully, when I press the trigger, it should be a different sound effect. So let's see what happens. So now you've got the ultimate Dirty Harry weapon. Listen to this. Now that is a weapon everybody wants. And that's just a small taste of what you can actually do with customising weapons. I've got um, uh, a question. Great, thanks very much. I think from the guy that actually requested this, so <laughs> it's rather appropriate. Is 100 maximum damage? No, absolutely not. You can change it to whatever you want. I mean, I've got it up here. Uh, da -da -da. Damage is 100. I can set it to 1,000. And then, remember what I said, you have to come out the software and then go back in. With a damage of a thousand, you would assume it would only take one shot in any part of this enemy's body to actually kill him. So we're going to see. Dun, 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 dun. Like so. I've got another question. Can you make the flash stay on for longer? I don't know. I don't think so. I think it's... um. I think it's fixed. I'll have a look in the gun spec. If there's something like flash delay or flash life, then yeah, that would be a great thing. But it's nothing I'd like to do myself. So one kill, right in the foot. Maybe you can stay still. <laughs> yes, that foot will never walk again. You've also noticed maybe this is something that's going into version 1.131. Uh, uh, scalable ambient obscurance. The gun's casting a tiny little... Uh, 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 ambient occlusion shadow. If I click it, I collect it. It disappears. Okay, so you got a nice bit of SAO going on. It's not perfect. I would like it to be a little bit better and tied more in with the scene. But just as a first salvo, as to let's get on that road to making visuals better. I think it's a great start. And for screenshots, it looks awesome. So can the flash stay longer? Well, let's just have a quick peek at the um, at the gun spec. We've got all the zoom stuff, the recoil, the gun lag, visuals, you've got transparency, you've got any uh, polygon trim, if you've got cubes in your gun model you can hide them automatically with that feature, decals, muzzle flash is fixed, muzzle colour, muzzle flash, muzzle zoom, muzzle size, smoke speed, and um, that's about... It, yeah, so there isn't any um, glow speed. The only thing I would recommend is maybe modify the RPG, the rocket launcher weapon, which not only has a, a muzzle flash with some dynamic lighting, it also has a secondary dynamic light for the um, the rocket, 
the, the backwash from the rocket. And if you could sort of hack that so the rocket never actually moves, then that backwash will stay there for as long as the bullet life exists. So you can have it end up with a really bright light. But that's for you guys to go out and an experiment with. For here and now, this was how to customize a weapon. Certainly not model one. You'd really want to know a lot of modeling and texturing and and very clever things to be able to get that far. But if you just want to take a weapon that already exists and modify it slightly in the visuals, slightly in how it sounds and slightly in its attributes, then this is how you would do it. So I hope it's a useful video. I think it is. It's a really exciting topic. So thanks for the suggestion. It should be... Um, it's also next Thursday, I think, the next Twitch. It's not Wednesday, so in case you're re watching this video, it's not next Wednesday, it's next Thursday. Again, more meetings, I apologise in advance. But uh, hopefully this broadcast was great and you get to learn a few things about guns in Game Guru. So until then, until next week, I hope you enjoyed this. And I shall say goodbye and bon voyage and uh, see you next week. Bye bye.